Good morning, everyone, or good day, everyone. Welcome to the Meditation Town Hall with Mama Surya Das. And as usual, we'll go over a couple of things we've got coming up. Coming up on June 8th, so it's, it's coming pretty soon, is the live day-long virtual meditation retreat, Awaken Aware Sangha Live Living Community live living community. That's us. We encourage you to give it a try. If you have not done, especially if you have not done retreats, if you have done retreats, that's fine too. But if you have not done retreats and you're thinking of doing the the summer retreat that's coming up that I'll mention in a minute, this is a good way to kind of just see what it's like, observe the noble silence for a day and participate in the retreat. Next, we've got the summer pop-up virtual workshops, and I've just registered for Death, Dying, and the Bardo, Saturday, June 29th. I won't be home for the one on karma on July 20th. They're obviously, they're both, you know, core, core concepts and good to learn about. And of course, as I said, we've got coming up October 27th to November 1st in Litchfield, Connecticut, part of the country that I love. We'll be doing the next in-person meditation retreat. And now, Lama Surya, if you are ready for us, we are ready for you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you all. And a beautiful day it is, don't you think, Mel? It, it, it is gorgeous. I didn't know Litchfield, Connecticut was one of your favorite places, but I know you can drive to it here on the East Coast. And we're looking forward to it. It's a beautiful green place. This is the era of the Green Buddha. So we should consider that going green in various ways and enjoying a beautiful nature. Of course, we're part of nature, and I don't know how much that's being discussed these days, but I love it. Thich Nhat Hanh loved it and called it into being and wrote so many poems about nature and water and how the four element, five elements are all part of us. Leaves, leaves of paper he's writing on, the bamboo stylus in his hands, pen, etc. In fact, if you're not familiar with the great, late, venerable Thich Nhat Hanh, a Vietnam refugee long in France, and his wonderful, enlightening books, commentaries on the Heart Sutra, things like that, his poems, if you want to feel some compassion and heartbreak, read his poem, Call Me By My Names, about the Vietnamese boat people being attacked by pirates as they're trying to escape Vietnam, men, women, and especially children during that horrific era. Fortunately, we're not in that era anymore. Well, we sort of are. Same circus, different clowns and countries, I'm afraid. So let's have a moment of silence, caring, compassion, benevolence, Dona Buddhism is loving kindness, metta, Wishing well for all. Wishing others well. Wow is the acronym of the day. I M H G. No, I M H O, etc. Wow. Get with it, kids. Mel, I'm glad to hear you say that you are not passing or whatever you said, being gone by the time of the karma retreat, but just going to be not at your house. We're with you. And all, all in this world, in this ephemeral transient world who are aging, not just the ones we know and like, all, need I emphasize, all who are aging, or just take out the who, all aging, hopefully also growing, maturing, deepening, evolving, coming home to our true selves, authentic vocation, authenticity, hard to define, but we all know when we're fooling ourselves or deceptive, including all in our prayers and sterling aspirations and 
contemplative practice called meditation today. That's a great day to have a great day, don't you think, Mel? In case you don't know Mel, Mel is swell. You know what I always say, if it rhymes, it's dharma. Or don't take it all so seriously, including oneself. Or life ain't much fun. I'm glad you didn't say Mel Mel smells. No, uh, your wife uh, texted me to say that, but I didn't, you know. I edit out certain things. Not all. Speaking of the joy of Dharma, you might notice the laughing Buddha over my shoulder. I have that there to cheer me up. And here's a great, great, have I said great yet, enlightened master? The great Kinsey Rinpoche, Chucky Lodro, our own Kinsey Rinpoche's root guru. No, Kinsey Rinpoche over there. You know, it's hard to point. It's like driving backwards. There it is. You go turn the wheel one way and go the other way. Dingo Kinsi Rinpoche's root guru, the Lama of Lamas, Trump is guru, Sogyo Rinpoche's uncle guru, Kinsi Chuki Lodro, probably the greatest Lama of the last generation, but who's weighing and counting. He escaped from Tibet and lived in Sikkim for many years, so many of us saw him there, especially the late Gene Smith who saved Tibetan texts and literature. Gene Smith, who founded the Tibetan Buddhist Resource Center, TBRC. Gene Smith, who got the Library of Congress to microfilm and eventually print all the Tibetan canon, conjure and tenjure, and distribute 300 copies of those thousands of volumes, all free to all the monasteries in India, Nepal, and Bhutan. So these lamas are well connected to us, even though they may be gone in the, some sense, even though they say they may be reborn, they've been recognized, their tukus, their reincarnations are being brought up and trained, and some of them are 30 or 40 by now. They're not that far from us. It's good to remember. And even some are still alive, like our great friend of the Zhongshan Foundation, His Holiness Gyalwang Drupa Rinpoche, the head of the Drupa Kagyu, the dragon sect of Kagyu, of the whispered pith destruction lineage. Look him up, drukpa.org. You'll love it. Read his blog. He writes it himself. It's like hearing him think. I love it. He is truly an enlightened master. And one reason I decided, you know, I really, I plan for these things. I am well prepared and ready, so I don't have to prepare that much, but I do bring some things to show and to share. Um, it's Sakadawa this month the month of Buddha's birthday, enlightenment day, and death day, according to most of the Asian Buddhist traditions. Sakadawa, the full moon of the fifth month, Sakadawa, if you look at the Tibetan calendar or the websites, the social media, etc. A wonderful time where any practices we do are multiplied hundreds and thousands of times, if you're counting. There's a lot of merits and virtues and good karma in this for one and all during this month. Especially on the day of the full moon, which I think is coming any day. I don't know, I have to look outside once in a while. I'm much too inward looking. You know, that's the problem in the spiritual life. It's beyond inside and outside, not just looking in. If you feel like you lost something, is that where you lost it? Inside? I don't think so. Anyway including all in our prayers and practice this month. So much aggression and suffering in Bosnia, not Bosnia, probably there too, in uh, the Ukraine, in Gaza. They're hacking each other to death in East Africa again, in various countries mostly because of religious conflict. It's terrible. My heart cries for them. A moment of silence, including all in our prayers, aspirations and practice today in our hearts, opening the wings of prayer, opening the sunflower, the lotus blossom of the heart chakra. 
using our best selves, our good heart, good mind, inherent goodness, our best selves, including all, connected with all, interdependent, interwoven with all, interbeing, as the great Thich Nhat Hanh says, according to the word, interbeing. Co-meditating together, intermeditating for interbeing, interwoven. One for all and all for one. As Dumas said, I'll plagiarize anyone. Check out the new movie. Every generation has the same movies of the Three Musketeers. There might be four who's counting. It's like the Kayas. Interpenetrating, interwoven, inseparable. I, thou. Darshan, vision of the divine, seeing it while it's seeing us, etc. It's Buddha's all the way down, folks. Look deeply. Ah. didn't move too far. Mel, could we see the prayer in the Zogchen Center Prayer Book of Refuge in Bodhicitta to start this Sakadawa, this Wesak full moon week, right? If we haven't already, that is. I'm sure many of you have. I'm a little late to the game. This is playoff season. I'm a little behind in my watching. <laughs> ah, thank you, buddy. Uh, this is how refuge is chanted under the Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya with the historical teacher, Lord Buddha himself, in the 5th century BC, sat and awoke as the morning star rose on the eastern horizon. Anatara Samyak Sambodhi, unexcelled, perfect, complete, supreme enlightenment not just had a satori or a breakthrough or enlightenment experience, but unexcelled, irreversible, complete, perfect enlightenment, traditionally called Anuttara Yaksambodhi in Sanskrit. Nirvana, sublime, great peace. 
not just quietude, but sublime great peace and harmony. Please chant and join in if you like, or just hum along. Hum along with Mitch Miller. Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samaha Sambudasa Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samaha Sambudasa Namo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Samaha Sambudasa Buddham Saranam Gachami Tamam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Dudiyam P for the second time Buddham Saranam Gachami Tamam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami We go for refuge in the enlightened Buddha and enlightenment itself, awakening itself. We take refuge in the sublime Dharma teachings and practice path. We take refuge in the noble, beloved Sangha community. From now until reaching perfect Buddhahood, for the benefit of all sentient beings without exception, we shall practice the six transformative virtues, the paramitas, wholeheartedly, day and night. <laughs> Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to liberate them. Delusions seem inexhaustible. We vow to transcend them. And Dharma teachings are boundless. We vow to penetrate and realize them. The Buddha's enlightened way is unsurpassable. We vow to apply and embody it. Can we see Atisha's prayer also? Mel, since he walked all the way from India to Tibet to bring Mahayana Buddhism. Oh, you passed it. There it is, Atisha's prayer. Refuge in Bodhicitta. From the great Pandita, abbot of Nalanda University, the great learning center of the ancient world, Nalanda Monastery University, reaching back to, I think, the second or third century AD. In Buddha, Dharma, and Supreme Sangha, we go for refuge until fully enlightened. By the power of all six paramitas, from generosity up to non-dual wisdom, prize the paramita, yay, for the sake of all beings, may we realize Buddhahood. to the occasion, assume the higher ground, the inner Tibet, the inner Himalaya, the inner heights, heaven, infinite, by any name, its reality is even more sweet and freeing. mention just being kind, giving, tolerant, flexible, present, 
uh, present and accountable. Just sitting or standing or lying down, whatever you're doing. Applying present awareness, this moment, mindfulness. Lucid sense to this openness or presence of mind to this moment, to whatever you're doing, doing it 100%. Just sitting, just breathing, just being with a capital B plus, present and aware, awareness with a capital A plus. See, seeing is freeing. Just breathing and aware of it. That's Buddha's basic meditation, mindfulness of breathing. Or just breathing, just being the breath, not being the watcher, no separation. Uh, breathing in, breathing out, uh, all that hot air, all that inner light. Healing, warming, illuminating the shadows of this gritty world. Taking on the suffering, confusion of all. Moving from me to we. From me, meditation to meditation, meditation. I like it. This is the wedding month. This is the graduation month. Uh, let's step up, graduate, leave campus, and get a life. Don't just be a perennial graduate student, living with fellowships, one's whole life in the dormitories or tents, encampments on campuses. This is a great vehicle. It's meant to sail the seven seas, not a little tippy kayak or canoe. No matter which way the winds of karma, conditioning, causation, karma might be blowing us, we can learn how to set the sails and navigate and handle the rudder better. Even tack up into the wind, not just be blown away like dead leaves, wherever the conditioning, the karma is leading us. Uh, being master rather than servant of conditions and circumstances, of habits, karma. Uh, and making better karma before freeing from all relational or causation. Free. There's only karma in this relative world. Cause and effect, like the laws of physics, for every action is a reaction. 17 laws of psychodynamics. For Newton, for someone. <laughs> But in Dzogchen, no karma. In prajna, in naked awareness, in nowness, awareness, this moment, awareness. Ah. Drop into that. Settle in that. Find refuge and solace and peace and freedom in that. In this, this breath, this moment, the only moment, in this. Usness, Tathagata Garbha, Sugata Garbha, Tabu, Business, Bodhidukas, Bhagas. This breath, only breath, this moment, only moment, just breathing, just sitting, just being aware. That's the path and the fruit or result. That's the ground path and result of the natural great connection, the natural great completion, the natural great perfection, so chat. And enjoy the joy of Kutta Zampa's primordial meditation.
on meditation. On meditation, pure being, the capital D plus, the ends, as Kant called it. Just sitting, just breathing, just being. The inner triple gap. That's your refuge, court in the stored waves of samsara, which is in our mind. Out, letting everything go, holding breath with each out breath, uh, relinquishments, uh, acting myself totally, uh, less of me, the more room for thee, O oh Lord. Uh, and joy to joy of subject. On meditation, pure presence, big body, Dhammakaya with it, of true nature, Imaho, letting come and go, letting be, letting go, Imaho, way to go. Seeing, there's just seeing and being, just being, no one to see, nothing to look for. Uh, as Buddha said, uh, uh, Oh. 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 Oh.
That's why I've always shed my the five chakras, the five chayas, the five skandhas, are the five senses, are the five directions of the universe of my life, are the natural great completeness, connection, perfection. Oh, oh, oh. oh.
Now for a little Vajra tune up, chanting, chanting once and five times the five Oz of the Dzogchen Mandala. Here it's on the cover of one of the great books by Longchenpa. The five Oz, the first letter of the Tibetan Sanskrit alphabet, like A in our English letters, let's call them. I can't hear you again, please. You don't have to move your hands if you don't want to, but just ah with the big out breath. Ah, ah, have fun. Ah, 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 ah. One extra for the baker's half dozen, the six parameters. Ah, 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 ah. But who's counting? Ah, ah, ah. I think of talk after that. Beyond reference points is self, meditator, and object of meditation. Other, just being, just seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, feeling. Five Buddhas of the sense conscious mandala, the Buddhakaya, the Nirmanakaya, Tuku, body. Living Buddha, Tuku, perfect embodiment. Who do you think you are not? Who do you think you're not, big shot? Ah, uh, not big enough, obviously. Ah, uh, I love it, thank you. Oh, way to go, yo. Yo, do what I know. No shame at all, no shame, no blame. No. Club, uh, we're not selling it, just read it. Uh, if you want to understand what's going on here in this Western world, uh, 
by Harvey Aronson, Lama Ann Klein's longtime husband. I know how well you can read these titles. Buddhist, Buddhist practice on Western ground. So profound. It's like reading American Trumpa, pioneer, original. Excuse me while I croak. Ah, uh, I was looking around to show you the ah uh, calligraphed on the cover of the Jewel Ornament of Liberation by Gampopa, which I must have here somewhere in the pile, but I don't know. Someone must have come along and put some of my books back on the bookshelf, you know. You know how helpers are once they get in the house. They do whatever they want. If you look at the Jewel Ornaments of Liberation, Milarepa's disciple, main disciple, Gampopa, only 900 years ago, he wrote that. Kala Rinpoche, my own root lama in Darjeeling in the 70s, used to say to us, it's the only book we ever need to read. <clears throat> it's a little dry, but the cover, the ah on the cover, so beautifully calligraphed by Chagyam Trumpa Rinpoche. You know, all of us are connected. These things have been around a long time, not just 50 years, 60 years, but like 1,500 years or reaching back to the time of the Buddha. It's a lineage. I'm sorry, it's a beautiful thing. It's so precious, this ancient, timeless wisdom. We ignore it and overlook it in these modern times at our peril. This great natural resource called time, universal timeless wisdom, not any ism. With all the schisms attendant upon such partisanship. A universal, universal wisdom. Truth, love, basic sanity, whatever you want to call it. Having a heart. Not just a conceptual mind. So Let's go out chanting, singing, and praying. Let's chant the Great Compassion Mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum. The Dalai Lama's mantra. Kali Rinpoche's favorite mantra. Om Mani Padme Hum. The Dalai Lama's mantra as an incarnation, as an embodiment of the Buddha of love, compassion, Chenrezig, Avalokita, Shra Kuan Yin, whatever you call her. She's even more sweet than any words. That's a six-syllable mantra, the national mantra of Tibet. Om Mani Padme Hum Om Mani Padme Hum
Omani Padme, oh, 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 Omani Padme, oh, Omani Padme, oh, Omani Padme, Omani Padme, oh, make me one with everything. Oh, Omani Padme Omani Padme Omani Padme Omani Padme Omani Padme Omani Padme all beings everywhere be happy, content, awake, liberated, and free. May there be peace in this world and through all possible universes, and we all together complete this spiritual journey. <laughs> Homage to the innate great perfection, the natural great completeness, the great connection. May it be realized, actualized, and benefit one and all. These were some of my main teachers in the 70s and 80s and 90s and even His Holiness in the 70s until now. They all practiced Omani Padme Hung every day, all the time, practically their whole life since they were four or six years old. Also this great Lama of the Sakya sect, we don't hear about much, with his main protege, Gene Smith, the late great Gene Smith, I mentioned it before, saved Tibetan. Text and literature. Dejung Rinpoche of the Sakya sect. He too, his Yudam, his practice was Chenrezi, great compassion. Kala Rinpoche has said, not that we talk about our practices and accomplishments, but in this Vajrayana tradition where perhaps because in the old world, in ancient times, which lasted until the 1950s, 40s, 50s in Tibet, they didn't have clocks. I don't know. You would practice and count the mantras or the bows, and you would do 100,000 mantras to learn them and practice them, or bows, or mandala offerings, or other things. So Kala Rinpoche was known to have practiced, and you know, it's hard to translate the number. Of course, we heard him say in Tibetan, and in Tibetan, in Tibet they used ancient Indian calculations. Just like these days, some of us don't know the difference between feet and meters, kilometers and miles. We may know those, but if we have foreign cars, work on them with metric tools, not for not American tools made in Detroit, because of the metric system they use in Europe. Anyway, I diverge, I wander, I explain, I pontificate, I teach, excuse me. Kala Rinpoche said in my hearing he practiced three tung of Omani Padme Hung. Now I have to explain what a tung is. A boom is 100,000, so we do a boom of prostrations and things like that in the Nundra practice. 10 booms is a million. 100,000 booms is a tung. So one day, some of us geniuses with PhDs from Stanford and MIT figured out, and they told me, I mean, I didn't do anything except try to understand, 
that it meant 10 million, no, 100 million repetitions of that mantra, a tung, a tung jur. I don't even know where you could look it up. I have Sanskrit Tibetan dictionaries. I don't know. You could find maybe on the web. Probably everything's there. A tung jur. I'll never forget. I can hear it in my head. He said a tung. A hundred million times of that mantra and other mantras. He did three tungs and he counted. He always had beads of mala in his hand. It was like part of his meditation. The rosary practice. Now, I don't want to compare it to Catholic rosaries and being uh, prescribed or ordered to do 10 Ave Marias or something and count them. You know, I don't know anything about that. It's probably for similar reasons if you dig deep and don't overreact against it. I'm just saying, these lamas, they all did like that. I bet you if they ask the Dalai Lama, I don't know if he, you know, counts. He's a little busy. You know, learning how many countries there are in the world and the names of all the presidents and diplomats that he meets. But he has a huge mind. I'm sure he did at least as many as Kala Rinpoche. I mean, he's the Dalai Lama. Anyway, they all practice this a lot their whole lives. It's not a beginner's practice. It's not something just for an enlightenment weekend or something like that. It tends towards Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, full, unexcelled, complete, irreversible, nirvanic, enlightenment, consciousness, Buddhahood. It's not the only mantra they did also, you know, uh, we did a lot of that too. Anyway, it's a great practice and it's a great way to keep track of time. As they say in the tradition, and I'm going to wrap up this little trope now, in case you're wondering. In the tradition, they say there's four ways to measure your practice. And when I heard that, I'm thinking, oh, good, finally, some way to know if I'm making progress or not. Yes, that too. By count, like if your Lama or the text says to chant the Balakasantra's mantra 20 times, one times a day, you count it. On your little abacus called the mala, your beads, your rosary, if you lost, put it in English. By count, or 100,000, or whatever, like I said, it takes a month if you practice all day, the 100 syllable mantra to get your 100,000. Your boom, boom's my, one of my favorite words in Tibetan. Your boom, there was a hockey called Boom Boom. I love that name, Boom Boom Jeffrey on Hall of Fame. Anyway, it reminds me of that, that energy, boom. That's a lot of mojo or chi. So you can do it by count or complete your practice by time. Maybe they, like a three year retreat or some, you know, by time, like chant the Mani Mantra um, a million times. It would take you three months, something like that. So you do it by time with three months, not necessarily counting all the time and putting markers down or keeping track. You know the modern clicker that they used to use going into a stadium or a movie theater? I'm sure now it's on a handheld screen. Anyway, you could count with the modern clicker, very modern. We used to use this in the 1980s. In the 70s, it was only beads in India. Anyway, so there's by count, by time. The fourth one, is, and the fourth one is by, by signs or accomplishment. Like, if you get enlightened, or if you have an enlightened dream, or your, your teacher has a dream or a vision of that. So that's the four, by count, by time, by accomplishment. I know I left out the three, because I can't, third, I can't remember. In other words, there are different ways to keep track of this. But my point is, practice makes perfect. It's an ancient Tibetan saying. Has anybody heard that? Or the more modern American saying, practice is perfect. Just like, just do it. Just like Mike. So that's how we get into and exhort ourselves to keep going, even when it's a little hard. You know, it gets boring. Or we have doubts. That's one reason it's great to practice with others. If you're sitting in a group 
and you know maybe there's some decision like we're going to have a one hour or a half hour or a 40 minute meditation maybe there's a gong maybe not you know somebody's keeping time so you don't have to look at your clock all the time or your watch and you feel like giving up in the middle but the other people are still going and you can draft in their wake or you're just embarrassed to get up and leave so it keeps you going whatever for whatever reason it's all good keep going as the Korean master said in his broken English only straight ahead 10,000 years that's the Bodhisattva way so it's a good um, month and the full moon is a great day to multiply your virtuous activities donations helping people, spiritual practices, much advisable, much multiplied during this time. Anyway, I say my little mantras every day like a good boy, and I try to draft on my teacher's wake. I don't really see it like drafting on bicycle or in a track meet and it's every bodhisattva for themselves, you know. I see it more like we're all being pulled along in the weight of the great vehicle on the great sea of samsara. And we're all being, uh, drafting in their wake in whatever vehicles we have, our body, our mind, our devotion, our inspiration, our love, our friends, our sangha our family, whatever the vehicle is, we're all being pulled along by this vast arc or aircraft carrier going forward, consciousness evolution, the thrust toward enlightenment, bodhicitta. So there's an effortless flow and um, inspiration pulling us along, not just dragging us along. I mean, sometimes I have to go kicking and screaming like pull myself into my meditation room that's my hand by the way in case you're wondering so thank you all love you great to see you mel do you have any announcements thank you, thank you lama i was just going to say that i'd like to say a, a, there's a virtual hand pulling me to say a virtual tongue of times that generosity is a virtue <laughs> And reminding you to donate to the Zochen Foundation and to become a member. You'll get a discount on the coming retreat. Have a great weekend. Have a great Sunday, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One and all. Love.